community. We've seen you and others who are seated in this room who are very articulate and who are able to speak uh, and to uh, speak intelligently the King's English, who can walk with a swagger and enter a room and command respect. That makes all of us proud when we see that and when we continue to see that as women of color. I think when we look on the basketball courts and know that we've got a president who's got a jump shot as well as a clear shot of making a difference in this nation, man, our chest sticks out because we have truly come a long way. When you look at the NAACP in terms of moving into the second 100 years, um, there are those who are suggesting that because the nation is not clear in terms of where it wants to go, uh, because there is no real insight on wanting to deal with race, even with this historic election, I've always said that, you know, it's, it's the 800-pound gorilla, the, the hardest thing for us to talk about uh, in mixed company is, is race, to be honest about it. Um, the closest we've come, maybe, uh, was during the O.J. Simpson trial. Right. Uh, there have been little blips on the screen uh, a, a, across the way, uh, but often it is still a, a conversation that is not had in earnest unless the room is completely black or completely white. Do you think that there is a need for this nation to uh, have a look in the mirror moment with itself to deal with race? I think President Obama uh, spoke volumes when he gave his speech on race. Um, he was forced into that moment to articulate his feelings about his upbringing and just opposed against his religious leader. Um, the issue of race will be with us. It's a very, very difficult conversation for us to have. But I think we've had it. And we've made significant progress by electing an American of African descent. And I think we need to continue to have those conversations. And I think they'll continue to be had because I read in the Washington Post where everyone, all the white folk in Washington, D.C. are looking to have their, get, make sure they have some black friends so they can have the conversations and get invited to the White House. So, I mean, I mean that's, a, that's a strange thing to say. But, you know, it's like, oh, I've got a black friend and let's talk about you know, do you know Barack Obama? Can we get to some of those state dinners um, uh, at the White House? But I think, really, the conversation in our classrooms, there is not one young people in this, one young person in this nation who does not know who Barack Obama is. Three-year-olds in the grocery store can say, Obama, Obama. They're writing letters all over the country to President Obama. And our school systems have done a significant job with our young people around educating them about the issue of race and opportunity in American society. And I think that's the wave of the future. It may be too late for some of us, but I think our young people, as we continue to push the bar and to have conversations around race, um, I think we'll be able to do a better job with this. Do you think that uh, the idea of the question of which we've heard over the last few months, CNN, MSNBC, any of the news organizations, the quote, relevance of the NAACP. I think about other organizations like B'nai Breath or others who, uh, no matter how long they're in existence, their relevance is rarely questioned. Why do you think that the NAACP uh, as a whole, the relevance has been questioned? Because so many of us have made it out because of what the NAACP has done. When we were all struggling in the same neighborhood, walking the same streets, riding in the same buses, and sharing the same cars, we were right there together. I think we're a very diverse community. We are not a monolithic community. And I think um, the, many of us have been able to secure all that America has for us. And as we've moved away from the old neighborhoods and we've forgotten from whence we've come, that has really started the, the, the divide, not only within the African-American community, but with the majority community as well, to say, I've made it, why haven't they made it? And so there's then no need for this organization who's still trying to help those 
we're still trying to make it. All right, let me ask you just a couple of questions with about two or three minutes okay. left that uh, are, are raised often, and that is, uh, do you need to update the name of the organization? Do you need to get rid of color? <laughs> color people come in all colors. And that's that. That's White the is a color. Day. Black is a color. Yellow so is a color. A 15, red is a color. <laughs> so to a 15-year-old who doesn't even know what colored people are, to a great degree, you don't see the relevance or the need to change it to the the NAABP or whatever it may be. It's something about the brand, those five letters, NAACP, that it evokes fear in the hearts of some and respect in the minds of many. And because of that brand, over 100 years ago, it still stands. And so we had an opportunity to uh, do a value assessment of the brand of the NAACP. And you would be surprised, Ed, the dollar amount that has been attached to the brand of the NAACP. So if we were to move to the NAACP, NAABP, or the NAA something else P, then what then would be our mission? Um, what would we, how would we express what has made us so uniquely an American institution for over 100 years? There are not many organizations in this country or corporations who've been around for 100 years. And so I would dare say to you, if you've got a brand, what we may have to do, or not, not may, what we need to do is to make sure that we do some uh, tweaking of the relevance of this organization and make it relevant. Uh, this corporation has come together under two very, very powerful brands and come together. Maybe it's an opportunity for the organization to see whether or not there are other organizations in the civil rights movement that we need to merge with and to have some common conversations with to leverage our collective ability to articulate a message that is relevant to today's um, society. Finally, before we let you go, I want to give you an opportunity again to talk to this group about why they should take a look at the NAACP. You talk about volunteerism being really the backbone yes. of this organization for many, many years. So give a sense of, of, of why the person in the back row who, who never gave consideration to joining this group should at least maybe, as you suggest, go Google and, and kind of take a look and see why they should, um, if not afford money, uh, money uh, and time. When Nelson Mandela was released from prison, he stated five words the NAACP. In Tiananmen Square, when the young people were protesting for liberty and justice and freedom, they sang, we shall overcome. It's an organization that has moved this nation forward like none other, particularly as it relates to social and economic conditions. I think that America owes a debt of gratitude to the men and women who died who bled and gave their lives for this organization, not just black folk, but white people who believed in the dream of the NAACP. I think it's relevant and is needed now more than ever before as we move forward under a president, an American president who happens to be of African descent. All right, well, we thank you for your involvement, for uh, it's hard to believe and say with the, such a young lady as yourself, but 25 years, 25 years in this uh, organization and in the movement. And we thank you so much, not only for that, but for your time this afternoon. I thank Appreciate you so much. And I, I want to also take this opportunity to say thank you to a co-laborer in the struggle for social justice across this country, Mr. Leonard James, who on behalf of this corporation gives tirelessly to the NAACP. It's difficult to be a corporate representative in a nonprofit organization and remain true to your values. He has done that uniquely, and I'm proud to be able to serve with him, but even more proud that he's provided this opportunity for us and that we could say that we partner with a great, great organization like ExxonMobil. So on behalf of our chairman, Julian Bond, who extends his regrets for not being here, he teaches class at the University of Virginia, uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and our president and CEO, Benjamin Todd Jealous, who had a conflict at the last moment and could not be here. That's the only reason they're not here, because we believe in ExxonMobil and we believe in the leadership and the values that we see espoused through one of your own, Leonard James. And so I thank you on behalf of the National Board of Directors. So that being said, let us thank her.